Hey there guys, Martek here. Welcome to another one of my videos. In this one, I'm going to show you how to make a paracord dog leash suitable for walking two or three dogs. Here is an example of this leash. We have a handle, a decorative knot, then a bit of our braid, which connects onto a swivel. Then our braid splits in two, and connects onto two snap hooks. You could add another one of these sections if you wanted to walk three dogs at the same time. Finally, a decorative knot is placed next to the snap hooks. And that's our leash. Let's take a look at the supplies. In this video, I'm going to be making a 4 foot leash. So the cord lengths stated are for a length of 4 feet. If you want a longer or a shorter leash, you're going to either adjust the length of this part here with the handle or the parts at the front with the snap hooks. So you can do your own proportions depending on the length of the leash. The handle part, so the braid, the decorative knot and the loop are going to require 4 cords each 12 feet long. These front parts here require 2 cords each, so this one needs 2 cords and this one too, and if you used another one, two again, each cord is 9 feet long. So, 2 cords 9 feet long and 2 cords 9 feet long. To make the leash a bit more functional, I highly recommend using an ice swivel. So this part here, in between the handle part and the front ends, is articulated using an ice swivel. The size of this one that I'm using here is designated as M5. Snap hooks are used to connect our leash onto dog collars. A tying tool, such as a marlin spike or a fed, is recommended. It's going to help you tie and tighten up knots. Finally, scissors and a lighter are used to cut and melt our cords. Let's begin. We're going to start our leash at the handle part. I have four cords, each 12 feet long. At the middle point, I'm going to secure them together. I'm going to move up about an inch, like this, then begin the four-stranded round braid. I separate two cords of one color to the right side, two cords of the other color to the left side. I take the top right strand, pass behind, in between the two strands on the left, and back to the bottom on the right. I take the top left strand, pass behind, in between the two strands on the right, and back to the bottom on the left. And again, the top right strand passes behind, in between the two strands on the left, and back to the bottom on the right. 
and the top left strand passes behind in between the two strands on the right and back to the bottom on the left. We are going to braid about an inch to two inches of the round braid. So let's see something like this. We are now going to attach our eye swivel around our braid. So the swivel has the braid running through it. Then we bring the two ends of our braid together, like this, trapping the eye swivel. Like this, and make sure that you have four cords of one color on one side and four cords of the other color on the other side. We're going to continue with the eight stranded lazy man's braid. The lazy man's braid is braided pretty much the same way as the four stranded braid. We just use two strands at a time. So the top right two strands pass behind in between the four strands on the left and back to the bottom on the right. Then the top two left strands pass behind in between the four strands on the right and back to the bottom on the left. And the top right two strands pass behind in between the four strands on the left and back to the bottom on the right. And the top two left strands pass behind in between the four strands on the right and back to the bottom on the left. Once in a while, tighten up by pulling on all of the ends. Just to get a nicer looking, more consistent braid. Then simply continue.
After breathing for a while, we have two feet of cord remaining in our hands. We fold our breed into a loop like this. Then we work our strands back into the breed. So let's see, this pair is going to follow this pair of strands in the breed. like this. This pair of strands is going to follow this pair here. This pair is going to follow this pair. And this pair is going to follow this pair here. Then we repeat the process. So each pair follows a pair of strands in the breed. So this one, this pair, this one, this one, this one here is going to follow this one, and this one, this one. like this. I'm going to do pretty much the same process once more, but only 
wet the last two pairs in the braid just to get them to this point here. So this pair and this pair are a bit behind. We want to get them to the same location as the first two pairs here. So this pair gets another tuck under here. And this pair follows this pair under here. Pull on all of the ends and we can now move on to the covering knot. We now cover our splice using a decorative knot. Pick up all of your cords and line them up like this. Wrap around your splice two times. Once twice. We are going to weave through the wrapping cords in pairs going under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. We start with our first pair here, passing under. Over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. So a total of four unders and four overs. Take the next pair and do the same. Starting under the previous two chords that you used. So under this pair here. Then over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. So again, four unders, four overs. Take the next pair. And do pretty much the same thing, starting under the previous pair of chords that you used.
So under, over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. So again, we have done four unders and four overs. We take the last pair and do the same thing. Starting under the previous two chords that we used, then over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. So again, four unders, four overs. Now, gently tighten up the knot and check that all of your chords are traveling parallel. Don't tighten up too much, just a little bit. We're mostly inspecting the knot so that the chords don't cross like this. Make sure they are parallel. To finish up our knot, we are going to take a pair of strands. Remember that we finished each sequence going over two. Here. Then, pass under the knot, like this, to the right side. Like this. Take the next pair, which again finishes its sequence over two. Here. Then we pass under the knot to the right. And the next pair, again, finishes over two, then under the knot to the right. And the final pair passes over to here. Then we pass under the knot to the right. Like this. To now tighten up the knot, we start at a pair of strands coming out of the splies. We gently remove our slack out of the knot. And into a pair of ends. And continue with the next pair 
again coming from this place. And the next pair and into the ends. like this. Tighten up the knot even more if you so choose. When tightened, trim the ends as close to the knot as possible. Then roll the knot. You take a plank, you press down onto the knot and roll it to get a more consistent look. And with that our handle part is complete. We have the eye swivel, the four-stranded round braid, the lazy man's braid, the handle loop with the splice, and finally a nice looking covering knot. We are now going to move on to the other part where our leash splits into two or three parts. We are now going to make several front parts which each connect onto a dog collar. Each part requires two cords, each 9 feet long. Find the middle point in your two cords and pass your two cords through the eye swivel up to the middle point. Like this. This way you get four ends of equal length. Line them up. Hold them here firmly at the bottom. And tie a Matthew Walker knot. Take your first strand. Pass it over the top, like this, then behind, and into your first loop. Take your second cord, pass it through your first loop, Passing just above your first cord, here, then behind, 
and into the second loop. And the next chord passes through your first two loops. just above your second chord, then behind, and into the third loop. And our last chord, passes through our first three loops just above the third chord here at the front. Then into our final loop. So we have our first chord here at the bottom, the second one just above it, and the third one, and the final fourth one like this. Take your first chord at the bottom and place it alongside this chord here on the right. Take the second chord here at the bottom and place it alongside your first chord. Take your third chord and place it alongside the second chord, like this. Square up the knot a little bit, and very slowly pull on all of the ends to gradually tighten up the knot. So this is done very slowly and gradually. You're going to want to pull this slack into the knot as well. So you pull here at the top, pulling in the slack. Then pull on the end to remove the slack. And do the same with the other cord. Keep tightening up until you have a nice looking Matthew Walker knot. So something like this. Continue with the four stranded round braid. Separate two chords to the right, two chords to the left. With the top right strand, pass behind, in between the two strands on the left, and back to the bottom on the right. Then the top left strand passes behind, in between the two strands on the right, and back to the bottom on the left. And the top right, 
and the top left. We're going to braid quite a bit of this braid until we have about two feet in our ends remaining. After braiding for a while, we have about two feet of cord remaining in our ends. Take a snap hook and feed the ends through it. Fold the braid like this, trapping the snap hook. We're going to continue by splicing our ends into the braid. So let's start with this end. Let's say it's going to follow this strand. And this strand is going to follow this one here. Like this. And the other two ends this one is going to follow this one here. And this one is going to follow this one. So each end follows a strand in the braid. Repeat the splicing process for a second time. Here, I'm going to bring the two strands furthest back in the braid up to the front two, so I'm going to splice them once more. So just the last two.
like this. We can now begin our decorative knot. To tie the decorative knot, pick up all four of your strands and line them up. Wrap around two times around your splice. So once, and twice. Take your first end and weave it in an under one over one sequence doing four unders and four overs. So under over, under over, under over, and under over. Four unders, four overs. Take the next end and do the same thing, so four unders and four overs, starting at the previous strand that we used. So under here, then over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. So again, four unders, four overs. And the next end, again, starts under the previous chord that we used. So under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. So four unders and four overs. And the last of our strands passes under the previous one that we used, then continues over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. So again, four unders and four overs. Now, we start on the left. Remember that we finish our sequence going over one. Then, pass under the next working hand and follow the strand passing towards the right side. So, over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. Take the next strand, so 
So let's say this one here, which is now passing over to here on the left. We pass under the next working hand and follow the strand traveling towards the right side. So over, under, over, under, over, under, and over on the right. And the next strand, let's take one, which again finishes over two. Pass under the next working hand and travel alongside the strand, traveling towards the right. So over, under. Over, under, over, under, and over. And our final strand again exits over two on the left. Passes under the next working hand which has already been used and travels alongside the strand going towards the right. So over, under, over, under, over, under and over. On the right, we exit the knot with an over one. Here, 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 and here. We continue on the right by taking a strand. It exits over the one. We re-enter over two, splitting a pair of strands. So over two, then under two here, over two, under two, over two, under two, over two and under two. We do the same thing with all of our strands. So this one exits over one and re-enters over two. Then under two, Over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, and under two. And the next strand, again, it exits over one and re-enters over two. Then under two, over two, under two, Over to under to over to 
over to and under to. And our final strand exits over 1, re enters over 2, under 2. over to under to over to under to over to and under to like this now I'm going to loosen up the knot a little bit, then bring my ends under the knot to the right. To finish up, we now simply tuck our ends under the knot to the right. Like this. Now we're going to tighten up the knot. To do this, we need to start with a strand coming out of the splice. So we need to find one. So this is one here. Run the slack through the entire knot. Continue with the next strand, so again one coming out of the splice. Do this with all four of your strands, then we're going to continue.
So after one pass of tightening, you may want to choose to tighten up for a second time. After tightening, trim the ends. And to roll the knot. This completes one of the front parts. So we have the Matthew Walker knot, the round braid, then a splice covered with a decorative knot and a snap hook. We are going to add a second or even a third part just like this one. After adding a couple of front parts, our leash is complete. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope that I made the tutorial clear enough. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section. Also, consider supporting the site on Patreon. See ya next time.